thank you all the principals and leaders for being part of this today. Uh, I'm really excited to be digging into such an important topic. And it's a topic that affects me and it affects you, all of us, uh, very dramatically. And it, these are unprecedented times. And I think that there are times that define us as leaders. So let's get started in the webinar. I know we're gonna walk through uh, strategies for leading during COVID-19. And then after that, we're gonna provide some key time for you to ask questions. So jot your questions down, send it off to Arlen in the, in the chat, and we will get those questions answered at the end. So I'm gonna turn off my camera, but I just want to say hi, everyone. Uh, I'm at my home here. I'm in a, a suburb of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and uh, we're doing well. I'm actually a high school principal, so I'll walk you through that in a little bit. Let me turn my camera off and uh, let's get started. So let's jump into strategies for leading during COVID-19. So uh, this is uh, obviously this is me and uh, feel free to jot down my email. It's chaselearning.org. And that actually has my that has my uh, Twitter handle. I would love to connect with you on Twitter to learn more about you and to connect and hear your thoughts and reactions to this. And then I put my cell number on there. I like to be highly accessible to people. Uh, so don't hesitate to shoot me a text, give me a call, reach out through Twitter or through my uh, website. Also tonight, uh, after probably about an hour after this is done, I'm gonna upload the entire presentation on my website so you can uh, go and get it. If you have troubles finding it, just shoot me an email or uh, contact me in a text message. The other thing I'm pretty excited about is I just uh, published my second book, through Corwin, you don't need superpowers to be a kid's hero, leading a hero building school culture. So I encourage you to check it out. You can go to amazon.com, check it out there, uh, or you can purchase it at corwin.com. Just released, so pretty excited about, about that book. So let's jump into what's online learning look like? I mean, in the sense of being a leader now. And I think the first thing for us is, is that as leaders, we need to lead more than ever before. And what I mean by that is just because we're online and everybody's in their homes doesn't mean that we're, our role as the principal stops in any way. I think it's just the opposite. Our job, and you know this firsthand, our job expands even more. I know when my school went full-time online, I literally was consumed day and night on answering emails and helping people get online and connecting with people. And I wanted to go over a few things today. So the first one, you might've heard this before, but Maslow over Blooms. Uh, we're gonna talk about kids over content, grace over grades and less is more. And I think some of these key pieces are gonna really help you as a leader to focus your, the attention of your faculty and staff or what we like to call our staff work. So we are a Jocelyn's Renaissance School um, and I actually give you a little background, but I'm actually a high school principal in suburb of Philadelphia. I'm a high school principal of a school uh, of 1,050 students called Potts Grove High School. And we, are, we have been totally online since March 13th. Uh, before that, we were a one-to-one -one comprehensive high school uh, with all of our students having MacBook Airs. And I think that really contributed to the transition being smooth. But today I wanna do is I wanna walk you through some key things that you can do as a leader to help your faculty and staffers, we call it our staffity, you may hear me use that term a few times, walk them through online learning and what's that look like. So first of all, with Maslow over Blooms, it's all about meeting the physical, emotional, and mental needs of students first. Without a shadow of a doubt, one of the most important things we can do as principals is the stress to our faculty and staff that we need to meet the physical, emotional, and mental health needs of our kids first. And what that means is, that sometimes we put learning aside, or can I say we put the content aside? Because the learning continues. Learning how to deal with conflict, learning how to deal with anxiety, learning how to live in quarantine or social distancing, sometimes those are more important lessons than Shakespeare or anything that you could possibly teach. The next piece is we really need to be digging into social emotional learning. Strategically looking at ways as leaders that we can build in social and emotional learning into everything that we do. I'm gonna share with you a little bit later on ways that our school is doing that. And same thing with around mental health. So stay tuned and stay connected because toward the end of this, we're gonna be talking about how to really bolster the mental health and well being of your students. Another piece of Maslow over Blooms is regular check ins. So I think it's so important 
to be checking in with students on a regular and consistent basis. I mean, not just a Zoom meeting, but I mean even a personal phone call. So what we've done is our district has been phenomenal in that we have actually paid our hourly employees and continue to pay them. And our superintendent said, hey, find a way to utilize these, these powerful resources that we have, these people, to get them connected with kids. So what we've done is we've actually assigned like our power educators and our teachers aides to assign them, go call this group of kids to do those check-ins. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the section on mental health. And then the last thing is feed them, provide supplies. So today I just came back from our lunch uh, delivery system. We had all the principals come out and deliver lunch to our students. And we, over the last four weeks, we delivered, we had over 32,000 lunches picked up. And we're pretty excited about that because we know firsthand that it's Maslow over Blooms. You gotta feed kids, you gotta make them uh, feel connected. The other thing we do with this is we actually provide them with school supplies and they can pick them up there. This is a big one. This next one I wanna talk about, for me, I'm really passionate about this because this is what it's all about, right? Kids over content. And if you were, I wish I could take you to my staff meeting or my faculty and staff meeting that we had on Tuesday. I talked to them about these exact same principles and I've done two weeks in a row to the point now where my, st my staff, my, our faculty will actually say to me, Bill, I know kids over content, but I, I have a question about this. I know grace over grades, but I have a question about this. And I want them to be, just as a leader, I think it's my responsibility to instill in them the focus of kids over content, Maslow over Blooms. So what does this mean, kids over content? Let's focus on the child. So one thing that we've been trying to do is to get our teachers to do check-ins with students every day and check-ins just connect with them in an interpersonal way. And I like to think of it as what will they remember 10 years from now? When students look back on this pandemic and their learning, what are they gonna think about? Obviously, they're gonna be thinking about how they lost the time with their, their friends and they closing out their school year, but well, I want them to be thinking about the fact that, wow, my teacher came alongside me when I was nervous and they helped me. My social studies teacher came alongside me and they, they supported me and helped me and provided me hope. And I think that's one thing that is so important today that we instill hope in kids and let them know that, hey, it's going to be all right. We're going to get through this. We're going to make it through this and we're going to be stronger as a result of it. So I can't focus enough on strengthening the relationship right now around learning, right? Strengthening the relationship around learning. Not that learning content isn't important because it is, it's critical. Because I think one of the things that we're gonna have issues with is learning gaps next fall. We're gonna have issues with learning gaps, but more importantly, if we don't take care of the kid first, we're gonna have mental health issues and stress and all anxiety more so than learning gaps, and we don't wanna have that. So strengthen the relationship. I love this last piece here, build hope, care, and love. As a principal, when was the last time you talked to your teachers about loving their kids? Especially high school, I'm a high school guy. I was a middle school principal before that for seven years, and before that I was an assistant principal for nine years. I've been a principal or assistant principal now for over 22 years. and. So I understand firsthand how challenging it can be being a high school or a middle school principal or even an elementary school principal. But one of the things I love about middle elementary school teachers and elementary principals is that they emphasize building hope, care, and love with kids. But for some reason, when it goes into the secondary level, we miss out on that. And that's something we need to harness and stop and we need to embrace and teach our teachers to love on kids. And it's about being there. So this next one, as we move into online learning, what that looks like, grace over grades is critical. This is mission critical. And what I mean by this is show grace when grading. This is not the time to teach a kid responsibility. I, I was dealing with a teacher uh, recently, in, you know, I had a conversation with the teacher about, listen, this isn't our time to teach a kid responsibility on getting in and meeting with deadlines. Let's accept late work. I love what one of my teachers said. Uh, he said, Bill, I like the term floating deadlines. And I said, what do you mean by floating deadlines? Because that's complete oxymoron. I, 
I don't even know my mind can comprehend that. And he says, Bill, what I mean by that is that is I set a deadline to try to get most kids in. And then if they don't reach that, I say, hey, listen, okay, we're going to move it up a day. I understand everybody's stressed out. There's a lot of anxiety. Our governor just announced for us here in Pennsylvania last week that our schools closed for the whole year. So that sent a lot of our families into, you know, a swirl, which I completely understand. It sent me into one also. So maybe you flex that guideline. Maybe you float that deadline. And he said it's really working for him. I love the, the image that's up on the screen there, grace over grades. Think about that. Have that conversation with your teachers and let them know the importance of focus on, on grace over grades. This is not the time to dig in and teach responsibility through forcing deadlines. It's also not the time to dig in and teach responsibility by saying, I'm not going to accept late work. I'm not going to, you know what? You got that grade and that's what you got. Or how about do-overs and allowing students a second chance to complete something? I love what I saw on Twitter. I forget who it was, but the gentleman on Twitter that said this, he said, imagine, have you ever taken an online course? I know I have. Now, what he said was, imagine me taking six online courses at the exact same time, getting messages and emails and updates from six different teachers while there's two or three other siblings in the house and one computer. How do you think you would handle that? I know how I would handle it. I would be stressed out as a kid and I'd be focused and frustrated. The same is true with our kids right now. We have kids in our homes that have one or two or four or five or six siblings that maybe they're taking care of while mom and dad are on the front lines taking care of people in the hospitals. I spoke with a dad recently. My heart went out to him. This is what he said to me. He said, Dr. Z, I have four kids at home. I have two of them with special learning needs. He says, and my ninth grade student, she needs to take care of the other three kids while my wife and I are at work. He says, my wife is a medical, uh, she's a nurse at the local hospital, and I'm an essential personnel at a company, and both of us need to be there. And he, and he said to me, he said, I'm really concerned about my daughter not getting her work done. And I said, Dad, I said, listen, it's not about that right now. What is it about? Helping your family get through this in a way that you can survive and thrive after it's over. And I said to him, listen, we're going to have grace with your daughter as we move forward with it. So think about that, grace over grades. And then here's the next one, less is more. One of the things that I've been really focusing on is focus on the essential learning pieces. Emphasize the key skills. So if we emphasize the key skills, the learning gap after we're done here, it's gonna be so much smaller. Focus on the essential learning, focus on less and emphasize skills. If we emphasize skills based what happens is the learning gap on the other side is gonna be so much smaller. But if we get caught up in, we gotta cover content, we gotta cover this. And you know, if I'm an English teacher, I gotta te teach all of Shakespeare's sonnets. Oh my goodness. No, choose the ones that are key. Choose the literature pieces that are essential. And let's focus on them. Because during this time, less is more. One thing that I like that we've done is we've done an asynchronous learning format, not like first period meets at 7.30 in the morning and the teacher is actually there teaching it at 7.30 in the morning. It's not like that at all. What we've done is an asynchronous learning model where the teacher assigns the work at 11.59 and it has to be due that time and the teacher records Zoom sessions of them teaching a lesson and then they hold small group sessions with students uh, as, they, as they see fit. The other thing that we've done that's been really helpful is we made a common deadline for all work. A common deadline for all work. Guess what it is? It's 11.59 p.m. at night every single night. So we told our teachers, what we found was they were putting deadlines all over the day. Some at noon, some at seven in the morning, some at four o'clock. I said, no, listen, 11.59. That gives students the entire day to complete their assignment and get it done. We found that to be really helpful. So let's talk about communication. I think one of the most important things we can do as leaders during this time is to communicate. And when we communicate in a way that's meaningful, intentional, and caring, we really work to bring people together. So what I wanna talk about is I wanna talk about um, 
first of all, is personal phone calls. And I want to talk to you about what that what that's like. Okay. And with that, with our with the uh, phone calls, what what I like to do is I like to choose a department every single day and call that department. So like the other day I called the social studies department. I talked to every single teacher in my social studies department. Or, you know, tomorrow I'm gonna to call and I'm gonna have meetings with our music department. I'm gonna connect with all the teachers. And what I do during this time is I'm talking to them more than just social studies. I'm talking to them as people, asking them, how can I help you? How can I come along and support you? And you know, what needs do you have? Very, very important. The other thing that's been really cool and awesome, I gotta tell you, this is, absolutely rocking awesome and i wish you could come to this this is so much fun is we have virtual town hall meetings so my superintendent said to me he says bill i want all of our schools to have a virtual town hall meeting and i was like you know we're a school of a thousand like we can get a lot of people like what's this going to be like it's going to be like may i how are we going to control this and so we had our first one it was a grand slam home run so what we do right now is we run bi-weekly town hall meetings and we focus them on topics. So uh, tomorrow night is one of our town hall meetings and tomorrow night is on uh, mental health for students, helping your students cope with COVID-19. And it's, it's, we're gonna have our crisis counselor on there. We're gonna have our social worker on there and they're gonna be providing parents and students. We invite everybody to come. They're gonna be providing them with key strategies to deal with this crisis and this pandemic and how to talk to their teams with it. So we're gonna be doing that tomorrow night. And then what we do is uh, in two weeks after that, we're doing a senior students and parents time. And obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, the first thing on everyone's mind is when is commencement, right? So what we do is we're gonna hold a senior student and parent class meeting almost where they will come on and we'll connect with them and we make them topic focused. And we typically get around 300 people out and it is a blast. Uh, we have a question and answer se session. And what I would really encourage you to do is to have someone assist you, have someone there taking down the questions because what we like to do is we like to solicit the questions in advance and then our, our assistant principal, what he does is he actually is there, he's reading through the questions and he provides them to me. Here's the uh, flyer that we put together for our Facebook Live and our virtual town hall. This is, uh, we use a great resource called Canva and uh, it's free, it's easy. You can see how professional looking it is, but this was our town hall meeting. Uh, and the next, uh, with, let me, I can't back up, so we're just gonna let this on, but one of the other pieces is Facebook Live. And I think it's so important to have a Facebook Live session. And I'm gonna show you that a little bit later uh, because Facebook Live connects with a totally different audience, right? So we have our virtual town hall and then we have our Facebook Live. And what we like to do is hold our Facebook Lives later in the evening because we know parents are there and are connecting on and they're surfing the web at that time. So I wanna talk to you a little bit about unity and support. I think as a principal right now, one of the most important things we can do is to build unity and support for for our students. And the uh, here's here's a video we made. You can see it playing. Here's me singing a TikTok. You can't hear the noise. I intentionally turned it off, but I went on and recorded a TikTok. And our our teachers recorded a video <clears throat> of talking about how much we miss our students. And this was huge. I mean, we got uh, thousands of views on this uh, from our teachers. And you can see the messages here that our teachers have about you know. How are you utilizing your time? What are you doing? Are you learning something new? And talking about how much we miss them. And this video is just one way to connect with, with our students. And I think it's been really powerful because people are like, hey, that's my teacher. Oh my goodness, I get to connect. Oh, there's Mr. Clark. Oh, there's so-and-so. And it's just been awesome. So I would really encourage you to get creative in creating videos and getting those videos out on social media. And I can't stress enough the importance of this. And then um, we have a Zoom staff lady photo. I'm gonna show you in a little bit. And the other thing we like to do is uh, yesterday at our staff lady meeting, we did something that was such a blast. I wish you could have joined us. So we have a teacher who's really talented on the guitar. And what he did was he led, a, he led our 
94 staff members on a uh, rendition of Lean On Me When You're Not Strong. And we just sang the chorus, Lean On Me When You're Not Strong. Obviously, I'm not the choral teacher, but he did a phenomenal job. And we recorded that. And then we took, uh, we recorded that using QuickCast. And then we're going to be putting that out to our families with a message on Lean On Us When You're Not Strong, because we're here for you. And I just think it's a really creative, powerful way to uh, to lead lead our students and our parents and our staff with it. Uh, it's so important. So you can see a lot of our staff will be here. That's our school nurse you're seeing right now. And um, this is the Stefano. And, you know, it's just I love how they got creative in doing this. I love how they got behind this. And one of our elementary schools just put out something that I love. It's a video of all the teachers as elementary school kids. And they had the kids had to guess who they were. And then their current picture popped up to let them know. So just find ways. I think more than ever, as principals, we need to come together and build unity and support around learning and culture. And to do this, we got to really be creative in how we do it. So what we've actually started also is a thing called Potts Grove United. Hashtag Potts Grove United. And what that does is hashtag Potts Grove United is every single day we put a video out from one of our teachers or staff members. And what the video basically says is, hi, everyone. This is Mr. Ziegler. Hey, I, you know, we miss you. Love you guys. Hope you're doing well. Stay strong, Potts Grove. And it's hashtag Potts Grove United. And we put out that message every single day to our parents. And it's just been awesome to see the interactions and uh, we do it on on social media through Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and it's it's been a blast. It's been a, just a really good time. So let's jump to the next piece of this. So here we are. We actually took a staff woody photo using our Zoom. What we did, we we I encouraged everybody to wear Potts Grove colors. We bought everybody Potts Grove family shirts. You can see in the top left, there's me, and then two more downs. One of our teachers wearing. The Potts Grove family shirt. It's only five bucks to get a shirt, get it out to people. <clears throat> and what we did was we said, we're going to take a Staffordy photo. And now we have four, four or five of these, I think, uh, because of Zoom, you have to slide to the next one. You can't get them all in at one time. But the reason I'm showing this to you is we took all five slides of these and we posted them on Facebook as a message to our community and our students on how much we miss them. And I cannot tell you the number of comments we got saying, hey, I see Mr. Sheehan. Hey, I see Mrs. McLaughlin. Hi, Mrs. Cash. Oh, my goodness, you look so good. Hey, oh, my goodness, Ms. Schott. Hey, Mr. Einhorn, thanks for doing this. And it, it's just been so, so powerful. Something I would encourage you to do, use that Zoom gallery view. You go into Zoom, top right-hand corner, and you click on gallery view, you will get the pictures of all of your teachers and staff members in this. It's just a great way to connect. And you can see here, we had 92 people in this. We got all 92 pictures and put them out there. And uh, it's just a real blast. So let's talk a little bit about school culture. So I think, you know, what's, what's it look like to create school culture during this time? So I wanna give you some ideas that we're gonna try and that, you know, it's gonna be fun. We're looking forward to it. So we're actually gonna be hosting a Zoom school assembly. That's right. At a certain time, we're gonna do some totally crazy and wild because as you can see in the left we have a lot of school spirit this is a day we do in school year called color day and it's a competition amongst all the classes and here our senior class with our senior class advisor there is holding up the spirit stick that we give out to the winner well what we're looking at doing is building that school culture during the school day and what does that look like so the first thing is we're going to get a Zoom assembly. We're going to have a motivational speaker. More than ever, kids need to hear a motivational speaker. So we're going to get a motivational speaker to come in, and we're going to get them to give us an assembly where all of our students can log in, be part of it, and we're pretty excited with it. We're going to use, I think, Zoom, uh, Zoom meeting, or I think we're trying to use Zoom webinar. It's a little bit easier. The functions can close people out. So try it. Think about a school assembly, whether you got to break it into four different assemblies, but for each of your classes, because your school is too big, maybe your elementary or middle school is too big, and you break it into classes, why not do a whole class? Why not bring all the fifth graders together and their parents? Invite their parents also. 
It's a great way to build culture. It's a great way to build unity. And it's a great way to bring people together. So the next one is a Zoom class meeting. So like I said, we're bringing all the senior class officers together in like two weeks. And I'm not, not just the officers. We're bringing all the senior uh, students together and their parents. And we just want to get regular meetings with our classes to connect with them on a consistent basis. Some of you have already done the next thing, but it's virtual spirit weeks. So our student government is setting up virtual spirit weeks where they can actually go through and we're going to have students posting things and we have hashtags built into it. And as a school, we always have a hashtag, hashtag PGHS12 is our 12th grade and they do a great job of keeping it clean and monitoring that and doing a great job with that. And then uh, we, we meet with our class officers. We just met with our senior class officers and we're gonna be meeting with our other ones. And then here's something I really cool I learned. I, I just love this idea. And it's clubs and activities virtually. So I was talking to a principal recently and what they said was they said, hey Bill, what we do is we hold our clubs online still. So we have a Minecraft club, we have a chess club and kids come on throughout the day, <coughs> excuse me, to, to schedule these, to be part of these clubs. And it's so much more than just learning. So I, I put it out to my teachers during the, during the school week, we have something called pride period. And what pride period is, is every Thursday for 45 minutes, students go to clubs or activities. And our activities are everything from yoga club to karaoke club to automobile club to chess club to uh, you name it, anime club, they, you name it, they got it. And I said, hey, how many of you would be willing to run a club next week? And I've had teachers going already, hey, listen, I'm gonna run a board game club. I'm gonna run a Fortnite club. I'm gonna run a chess club. And you know what this does? It builds culture. Kids are hungering and looking for things to do right now. And why don't you engage your teachers and even you as the principal in leading the club? I'm thinking about what kind of club could I lead? What could I do to participate in this? So it's a big, big piece, I think, as, as we move forward with this. So, so, you know, when you look at Zoom meetings, I want to go over a little bit Zoom meetings and I want to talk to you about how to make them productive. Because I think when we talk about large class gatherings and class officers, you know, here's some things. First of all, establish norms. And if you go to my website on my blog, I have a blog that outlines seven tips for making Zoom meetings. Uh, establish norms, mute the microphones and the cameras if you can. I love Zoom webinar. If your school can invest in school webinar, Zoom webinar, it is so easy to run a larger group than it is through Zoom meeting. Through, so through Zoom meeting, you can't mute everyone's mic permanently. You have to like every single time, anybody at any time can unmute their mic. So Zoom webinar is something, it's about $1,400 a district. You might wanna check it out. We're looking into it. It's just a great resource uh, and, and I love it. The other thing is to showcase something. Have a reason, have a purpose, have an intention on why you're there. The next ones, I gotta tell you, this is, this is wild, but one thing I've learned is that people need us to wait, increase our wait time and to slow down. Because when we rush through things, it's harder to process, even though you're looking at the person, there's so many distractions between their background or the dog barking, the phone ringing, or even in their house, their kids are running around. There's so many distractions that what I would encourage you to do is slow down, take some time. It's all right to repeat something and to provide enough wait time when you ask questions. And again, if you go to my blog, just click on my blog on my website, um, you'll see seven tips for making Zoom meetings. And then the last one is to make it engaging and have fun. So every single staff meeting we hold, we hold, we sing a song together. And what we found is it's a great way to bring us together and great way to get us connected. So I want to talk to you about um, mental health, right? So mental health is so, so important. And coping with COVID, I just put on just right now, <clears throat> put on a, a blog post. You go to my website, right on the slider, you'll see coping with COVID. You click on that, you'll see a, a blog post that we put in about how to, to support students through COVID-19 and the mental health of it. So the first thing I want to talk about is, is collaborate. You got to get people together. I, I'm not an expert in mental health. I'm really not. I mean, I've gotten a lot of experience in it. I've, I've worked really hard to learn about it, but 
guess what? My school psychologists and my counselors, they all know more than I do. So I need to come together with them. The other thing is a host of counseling series. So we have a counseling series called Coping with COVID-19. And these are, we're, we're doing a whole series over the next two weeks that kids can sign up for it through Sign Up Genius. And what they do is these groups are called, uh, they're all under the, all under the title coping with COVID-19, but it's topics such as how to deal with disappointment, how to deal with anxiety, how to deal with not seeing my friends, how to overcome my fears. <clears throat> These are some of the things that all of our counselors are leading. And what we're asking is that every group is led by two school counselors. And it's it's been great. Every group is led by stu two school counselors. We get students signed up. It's been awesome. Then the other thing is we use a question of the day, and I think I'm gonna show you this a little bit later, and a daily check-in for students. So the, the question of the day, what we do is that's how we take attendance. We actually have students come on and take a question of the day. And then we actually ask one of the questions around mental health. And then two other things, daily check-ins. So what we did is we've taken the list of students that we know struggle in the area of mental health, is we do regular and consistent check-ins with them. So we've split them up amongst our counseling team and we actually said, hey, listen, you take these five, you take these five, you take these five. And we're connecting with kids and we're still running groups and we're still doing counseling and we're still connecting. And then the last thing is there is the share resources. So here's the question of the day. How are you doing? This was the question, I think, last week. And it's I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing OK, I guess. I'm starting to struggle. I'm having a hard time. I need to reach out to someone for support. So what we do is when we get this, the last three questions, if they respond, I'm starting to struggle or below, their name goes off to a guidance counselor and a guidance counselor calls them immediately. The school counselor calls them and their parents to connect with them and see how they can support them. Again, this is gonna, this presentation in an hour after today's meeting is gonna be on my website. You can go and find it under resources, click under resources, you'll see Illinois, Principal Association link. You just go there and you can get these questions. And then here, the last things are the daily check-in, the share resources, bring in outside agencies. So we've been bringing in <clears throat> an outside agency to support us and to help us with this. It's really key. Don't do this alone right now. I can't stress that enough. And then meet regularly with school counseling. So I meet every week with our school counselors uh, for an hour and uh, just connect with them and learn with them together. So modeling creativity, what's this look like? So I have a video here. This is one of my favorite resources. You can't hear the volume because I don't want to distract you, but this is a volume. This is a, it's called Apple Clips. If you, an Apple user, you just go to the app store, you get clips and you can download it. And you can put in things like Toy Story and you can actually do text, text to speech and you can put in that cool logos. But it's time for you and I to begin to create. It's time for us to leverage social media, model creativity and model innovation and learning. And I think this is so important. Like every week I send a little video out like this. It's only, this is, I cut it off here, but it's about a 60 second video. That way you can go on social media and it can go on uh, through most emails pretty quickly, but a uh, great resource. So I'm gonna give you some resources that I like to use. So Apple Clips is by far my favorite. So they have a feature in there that is voice to text. So as you're talking, it puts the script, the closed caption script along the bottom. Phenomenal. The other piece is they have a number of stickers and different things that you can put in there. It's so easy to use. A lot of the images that I create are using Canva or Adobe Spark. I'm a big Canva user, but I know Adobe Spark's also really good, so I want to share that with you. And then Powtoon is a great way to animate and bring your videos to life. Flipgrid's one that many of you have already heard about, but it's a fun, interactive way for students to learn and for leaders to engage students and faculty through video. And then I have loved growing, I like TikTok, right? So I, uh, my daughter has taught me how to use TikTok. So what I do is I, I do a TikTok, like a funny TikTok to encourage my students or my faculty and staff. <clears throat> and then what I do is I download it and then I upload it to YouTube to share that out. And then finally social media. So I just wanted to share you some examples of principals that are doing really awesome things. So this one is Ken DePaver. He's a principal at Owen J. Roberts High School in Pennsylvania. So every single morning, he does the morning show. It's just like Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel Live. I mean, he has the clapping of the hands. He has the band playing. He has it all going together. 
And it's so, so interactive. It's just awesome. This is Allison Apsey. So Allison Apsey here, uh, she's an elementary school principal in Michigan. And then every single day, she does a book read with her students. What a powerful way to connect with them, to do a book read like that. And she has found that this has just drawn families and students in to keep them learning and engaging. This is one of my favorite principals I follow. His name's Jim Orachowski. He's at Wingate Elementary School in the Bald Eagle uh, School District in central Pennsylvania. What Jim does is every single morning, he does an announcement and a, a stay strong morning message from his office. And he does this from his office and he's just connecting with students, reading books to them, doing funny things, putting hats on, doing silly things, just connecting with students. And it's a great way to do it. Rock Hill High School. I think this is in the Carolinas. Ozzy's a friend of mine. And Ozzy, every single day, goes on Facebook and puts out a message. <clears throat> Here he tells you what day of the week it is. Uh, he gives you the little update. And he always puts a funny picture of himself. So here he has long gray hair. Some days he'll have a different hat on or a funny background just to connect with students. And I love, you got to take a picture of this. Again, this is going to be on our website. Uh, you can get at this an hour afterwards. I'll upload the whole presentation. But this is really cool. We had a fire drill, Rock Hill High School. We have a fire drill today. Directions, set an alarm for 10.30 a.m. And when the alarm sounds, teachers, parents, and students go outside. Stay outside for at least 15 minutes of play. Take a selfie of your home fire drill and post it on Twitter and Instagram with hashtag RHSDE learning. So just a great way to connect there. So I want to just close out by talking a little bit about how will this change us? You know, I think COVID-19 is going to change us academically forever. We will never be the same again as educators and as students. And obviously the first way it's going to change us is through the learning gaps. And that's why as principals, we need to be highly intentional in focusing on working to close the achievement gaps. So we're trying to get creative right now. On what could we do over the summertime to help students transition from eighth grade and ninth grade and the other grades and so on. And we're looking at what can we do to help close key essential learning gaps and what can we do about that? The next way I think it changes us is tech integration. So I've always said that a teacher who uses technology will replace those who don't use technology. There's no replacement for a great teacher, nothing. Great teachers who use technology will replace those who don't, I think. Because here, what has happened now is there's no longer, I don't need to do that. I don't need to engage with technology. I don't need to get on there. I don't need to do a Zoom. Well, yes, you do, because now it's the only way to connect with your kids. So teachers from teachers that are the, the first, you know, learning, just engaging novices of technology, all the way up to the, you know, the, the highly proficient ones, are going to increase and strengthen their tech integration skills. So what does this do? This challenges us as, as leaders to really foster and build this tech integration right now. Provide professional learning online. What we're doing at our schools, Apple Professional Learning provides 30 minutes free virtual coaching for educators, free, completely free. So we're making all of our teachers go on and get 30 minutes of free virtual coaching through Apple. There's a number of companies doing that. Jump in and leverage those resources now. The next one is a learning management system. So if your school did not have an LMS beforehand, they need one now, right? Canvas, Schoology, Google Classroom, <clears throat> whatever it might be. Use that learning management system and help foster learning digitally through that. Help, help your educators get embraced with, you know, online discussions and actual video conferencing through some of those tools. And I love Zoom, right? So can we use Zoom? I'm thinking right now, can I use Zoom as a parent, connect time with parents? Like maybe I have a lunch with the principal on Zoom every Friday at noon and get parents right from their work and where they're at. I think that we need to continue to leverage the skills that we have now and continue to use them even after the pandemic passes. And lastly is communication. We need to just continue strengthening our communication skills and bolster everything we have. So I just, you know, I really want to thank you for the time to connect. It's been great to connect with you. And, and I want to remind you I, a few things. On my website at chaselearning.org, 
I just put in a new blog post on ways uh, coping with COVID, five ways to uh, five ways to calm the anxiety of students. I encourage you to check it out. And we're going to actually be posting this entire presentation an hour after this. You just go to on my website, chaselearning.org. You go to resources, and you just drop down. You'll see the screen. It says Illinois Principal Association. You click on that, and the presentation will be there an hour after the presentation today. So uh, again, this is my website. Uh, don't hesitate to connect with me, my, my cell phone number. Just want to thank you so much for the opportunity to connect today with you. And I'd love to learn what you're doing and how we can grow together. So I think it's time for some questions, Arlen. Uh, I'll turn it back over to Arlen so he can uh, ask some questions. Perfect. Bill, thank you so much for sharing this great information with our participants today. I love the real life examples. Um, really appreciated seeing that, um, all those listed that you have there. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the questions box and see what we've got. Um, first is not not a question. Um, the, the, uh, Sandra just says, this just makes me want to be part of your school. I'm getting a dozen of ideas. Thank you. So awesome. Just to Glad. Kudos to you, Dr. Thank Zipper. you so much, Sandra. Thank you for that. Aaron asks, do you have some examples of virtual spirit days? Yeah, so what we're actually putting together is our, our student government right now is putting together virtual spirit days, but I love some of the ones that I've seen are uh, take uh, it's uh, bring your pet to school day, come to school in your pajamas day, uh, come parent day at school, different items in the house that you have like fruit day, and you take a picture with you learning, eating fruit. Um, the pet day is always a good one and uh, just get those out there. I, I think it just be creative, you know, and, and think of ways that kids can connect that they could never connect before, like bring your pet to school day. That's great. Maribel says, our district does not allow Zoom. Do you have any ideas for Google Hangout? Yeah, so Google Hangout does have some good ones. Um, you, you can do a Google Hangout similar to Zoom in the sense of having large group meetings and getting people to have fun. Here's the thing. I think whether it's Zoom or Google Hangout or Schoology or WebEx, whatever it is, people are Zoomed out. I made it now a verb. They're Zoomed out, right? So what we have to do is we have to find a way to make it more engaging rather than just the talking head. Sing a song, play a video, show your screen, let other people. The other thing I love is, and I think Google Hangout allows this, is you can do breakout groups. So we're gonna start doing this in our faculty meetings where we put breakout groups and we give them an assignment where they have to talk out as a group. So just some things to consider. Great, and Donna says, can you say again, which tool you used for the photos, videos that you put together that showed the Toy Story characters? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the Toy Story characters, that is Apple Clips. <clears throat> so Apple Clips, C-L-I-P-S, it's in the App Store and it's completely free. And it's so easy to use. Okay, here's a question from Matthew. Uh, what steps are you taking for the possibility of reopening this semester to meet the needs of students and staff? We anticipate this being very different from the first days of school in August. Yeah, so unfortunately, in our Pennsylvania, our governor has shut us down for the entire school year. So we are, we are closed down for the entire school year. <clears throat> However, let me say this. If I was to be open, and let's say we're going to go back in two weeks or so, I think you just got to spend one or two days of building culture, right? Of working to build culture. So you know what our first school day was last year? The first school day of this school year was a pep rally. We brought everybody together to celebrate. Now you may not be able to do that because of large groups, but what could you do that could be fun and engaging for kids to get them back in the building and build that culture together? Oh, Arlen, can I jump? Arlen, can I just jump in real quick too? If you, yeah. if you like this presentation, if you go to my website and you sign up and subscribe to my newsletter, I send out our blogs uh, weekly and I don't send you more than once a week or once a month to get connected. So next question, Arlen. Yeah, Jennifer asks, what kinds of things are your elementary schools doing? Yeah, so our elementary schools do, are doing very similar things than we showed right here. So uh, <clears throat> I love the book read by the principal or spreading it out and having different staff members on your staff actually do the book reads. Like I shared one of our elementary principals, I love what he did. What he did was he had all of his staff send in their, I think it was their kindergarten picture, and then it showed their real picture. And students had to guess that throughout that. And then we are doing lunch pickups 
So our elementary school principals are providing art and school supplies during that lunch pickup also. Perfect. Um, Odessa asks, what do you suggest for students that do not have any technology in the home? Yeah, great question. That's an excellent question. So first of all, I think as a school and as a, as a country, we have to find a way to meet the inequities of, of internet and Wi-Fi access. Because I think Wi-Fi access is another thing, right? So she brings up a great point. So even if I have a laptop and I don't have Wi-Fi, it's pretty much can't do much. So what would we say is do what we're doing. Our elementary schools, K to two, don't have, <clears throat> all of our students don't have technology. So they are mailing home packets. They're sending packets home. I was talking to a principal down in Georgia and their teachers are actually delivering packets to the students' home. Keep them engaged, keep them learning and get them going. Wonderful. Uh, Patricia says, do you have an after school program? And if so, how are you utilizing that program? So we do have a number of after school programs. Uh, they're not running right now because our school is closed, but we are working to provide interventions for students during the school day and also clubs and activities that students can engage in. Wonderful. Okay, just a few questions left. Here's Jamie's. Um, do you have any ideas for districts that have terrible Wi-Fi? Paper pencil doesn't work for special education. Yeah, that's why we have really been strategic in uh, taking our paraeducators, our teacher's aides, and assigning them to every kid. So I think every one of ours has 15 students, and every single day what they do is they call them. So they call them, actually. Call the student and the, the parent. <clears throat> if they need to, they're reading a book to them over the phone. They're reading a test to them over the phone they're working with them over the phone. I think that personal contact can go a long way. We're same thing with our teachers. Our regular our regular and our special ed teachers are reaching out to students that are struggling and working to support them in that way. Steve asks, can you please point me in the direction <laughs> of the free technology coaching? Yeah, so actually uh, Steve, if you just either text me or on Twitter, hit me up. I will send you the link to the Apple Virtual Coaching. And anyone listening right now, the Apple Virtual Coaching is absolutely free for uh, 30 minutes and it's outstanding. Wonderful. Um, Jeffrey asks, what are you doing for students who are absent, truant, or ones that you can't get a hold of? So <clears throat> we have 1,050 students in our school. And what we've done is we have a task force. We've actually assigned a task force, one of our assistant principals, his job is the follow up on every single student we can't find <clears throat> or we can't connect with. And what he does is he has a team of about 10 staff members. And what they do is they do phone calls, they do letters, and if they have to, they do home visits. We've tracked down of 1,050 students. We only have three that we haven't had contact with and we think they may have moved out of the district. So we put a task force together to say, listen, we're gonna go after and make sure that we can support every single kid and know where they're at, know what their needs are. So our task force actually goes out and does that and follows up with phone calls. Excellent. Aaron asks, what is the exit strategy for the end of the year, returning books, lockers, band instruments, athletic uniforms, et cetera? So what we're doing is we're trying to phase that in right now. So we did uh, instrument return, uh, pick up your instrument day. We, we did a day where it was pick up your instrument day, get your library books, get different things you need. Nobody in the building except staff two or three staff, and we run the stuff out to the curb. <clears throat> Obviously, as the school year closes out, we know that's much larger than that. So what we haven't really discussed that yet as a team, but what I would think we're gonna do is phase in who comes in so we have very few people in the building at the same time. So we may do it like grade and alpha. This number of students can come in, you get half hour, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, and you gotta be out in that time. Very good. Ashley asks, are there any other suggestions as a para to be engaged with the students besides phone contacts? Yeah, so I, Zoom meetings is another way, right? So we have our paras that will participate in Zoom meetings with students, reading tests and doing things with them. Uh, Zoom, Google Hangout, Schoology, video conferencing, other good ways to do that. And a follow-up, are the paras using their own cell phones to call students? They are. So what we've been telling them is to dial, uh, I think it's star six, seven, star six, seven before calling. What that does is that shuts off caller ID. So it, it's uh, they, it blocks their caller ID. 
The other thing we've been encouraging our teachers to do is the is the uh, get a Google Voice phone. It's completely free. It's a phone number you get. You just go into Google and just type in Google. I think it's Google Voice, and you get a phone number that's just completely <clears throat> a Google phone number. It's like a random phone number that you will have. You can give it office hours. You can set certain times, and you can turn it on and off at any time you want. And the cool thing is, it goes right to your own personal phone. So it's not like you have to take those calls from a different phone. Great. Um, Kathleen says, great presentation. Do you ever do presentations for universities or higher education? Yes, I do. So I do, actually, I teach for Temple University. I'm an adjunct professor and I am, a, in addition to being a high school principal, I'm also a consultant. So I go around the country doing presentations and I would love to come to your school organization or university to do a presentation like this. I have a number of topics you can check out on my website. Give me a call. Uh, that's my cell number, Twitter account, or go to my website. I'd be happy to connect with you and come to your organization. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Ziegler, for sharing your time with us this evening. We really learned a lot from your presentation. As I mentioned at the beginning, it was recorded, and the recording will be posted on edleadersnetwork.org on our live events uh, archive, and I'll also be sending you a direct link uh, if you registered for this webinar. You will get a direct link to the webinar recording, uh, a link to Bill's website for the additional resources, and then for those of you who attended live, you will complete an evaluation, which once completed will send you the ISBE Evidence of Completion form for professional development credit. Thanks so much, Bill. Thank you, Arlen. Thank you all the principals and everyone that participated. Thank you so much. All right, you are free to close the GoToWebinar control panel, and that will log you out of the session for this evening. Thanks, everyone.